What's up, everybody? Uh, big, big facts here. Yo, man. So I'm reading Frank Alexander's book, right? And uh, y'all know that Frank, Frank's demise, he had an early demise. And he suffered depression. Um, well, y'all know Frank committed suicide, right? So reading this book, it tells me, you know, he tells you right here that he was thinking about committing suicide. So I'm going to read it right here. It says, this is Thanksgiving 1997. It was a year after Tupac's death. And I was staring down the barrel of my own gun. I wanted out of this world. Nothing could have prepared me for the hollowness I felt. Death Row had turned its back on me. My wife had walked out again. I was having dreams of Tupac's murder every night. In short, I was suffering from post from post-traumatic stress syndrome. Hmm. Writing the book had kept me focused on other things, giving me an objective and a way to deal with my pain. When it was all over, I had to face myself again, and I wasn't prepared for what I saw. For the first time in my adult life, I felt my life was out of my hands. My world had turned dark, I stared at that gun and it stared and it started to look like my only way out of the hell in my heart. Damn. Every night I sat at home in my leather recliner with the manuscript on my lap. My 9mm folded up in the middle of it like a cold steel bookmarker. Every night I was there, stoned, out of my mind, reading my own words and reviewing my life page by page. I was alone. I was thinking about everything that happened, not knowing that Satan was entering my thought process because I was stoned all the time. I had my family, my home, all my nice things, but I had no peace of mind. I was missing the biggest piece of the puzzle, serenity. I had known God, but I didn't know Jesus Christ. I stared hard at my gun, filling my head with thoughts of suicide. On my table, there was a book, The Life You Were Born to Live. A friend suggested it, but I, had, but I looked at it the opposite way. I wondered why I wasn't living the life I was predestined to live. I'd always believe we meet people for a purpose. That life, that life was all about connecting the dots. Things that are going to happen are going to happen regardless of our actions. But I wasn't feeling that in a positive way. Each day I was sinking lower and lower into a depression. All I, was feel, all I was feeling was pain. On Sunday night, I was flipping through channels, and I saw this guy named Jack Van Imp. He had a spiritual show on cable, and I don't know why, but I stopped and watched it. His wife would read newspaper articles from around the world, and Van Imp would relate the news to the current day's events and interpret those events through biblical teachings. At the end of each show, he'd invite everybody to accept the Lord into their hearts. I started to get in the habit of viewing the show each week, and without really knowing it, I began to accept the Lord. I was too stoned to realize it. But after I'd gone through all the pain and suffering, I started having revelations. The Lord began putting the path in front of me. He started working with me to bring me out of, the, out of the depression and away from Satan wanting me to kill myself. 
I stopped getting stoned and that's when I decided after nearly four decades of being on this earth it was time to get baptized. It's a trip cause for many years I'd gone to church and been invited to be baptized and I always wanted to move out of my seat but I'd be stuck there like glue or nails were holding me down. I look back on it now and realize I wasn't ready. It wasn't it wasn't it wasn't my time. I lived my life as I wanted to live my life. But after resolving to be baptized, I decided it was time for me to find a life I was born to live and to see that I had a bigger and better purpose. I turned to the following scripture and it confirmed everything I was feeling. Psalms 139:13-16. Wow, man. So, you know. So, yeah. Frank committed suicide. Um, I forgot the year. But him and his wife was having problems. You know, I think she wanted to leave again. And he killed, him, he killed himself in front of his wife. So, yeah, like he said, he had post-traumatic stress syndrome. Man, that's very sad, bro. You know, that's very sad. R.I.P. Frank. Peace. And you know, he was, he, it's just sad, man, because he was thinking, he, 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 he had suicidal thoughts before. And he got, got himself out of it, you know, through religion, you know, like, like I just read, he had, he, he gotten his way out of it, you know, but he came back on him, man. Damn. That's crazy. Peace.